There's a very famous incident where the Prophet ﷺ was sitting with Abu Bakr as-Siddiq anhu, and a man came and he started to insult them. Now, the Prophet ﷺ, you know, has this incredible bandwidth of, of forbearance, right? He can tolerate so much, and we, f- we see this frequent in the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ, where someone comes to him and says things to him that none of the companions can tolerate, but the Prophet ﷺ can tolerate. So they're sitting there, and this man keeps going on and on and on, and the Prophet ﷺ is, you know, is holding it in. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who's also a very forbearing person, he can't take it anymore. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, especially as the man insults the Prophet ﷺ, stands up and starts to respond. And the Prophet ﷺ, he simply gets up and he leaves. Abu Bakr goes to the Prophet ﷺ after that, fearing that he offended the Prophet ﷺ and Rasulullah ﷺ. He says that before you spoke, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an angel that, that was to respond on our behalf. As soon as you started to defend us, uh, Allah subh- the, the angel went away and a shaitan came and sat there instead. A devil came and sat there instead and the Prophet ﷺ said, I did not want to sit in the presence of that devil, in the presence of that shaitan. Now subhanAllah, what that teaches us is there are certain things that offend the angels, certain things that make them go away. Now the angels that, that write, they're not going anywhere no matter what you do. They will write down every curse word, every nasty thing that you say or do, and though it's offensive, they will write it because they have to write it. But there are other angels, angels of mercy, the ones we've been talking about that come when you do dhikr, when you remember Allah, when you do tahara, uh, when you do wudu, when you pray, those angels will go away from you and instead they would be replaced by shayateen. So it's important for us to think, you know, what are we doing to offend the angels as well? You know, what are we doing to send them away? What are we making the ones that have to write, write down? And aren't we ashamed of that? And so subhanAllah, we find anger and foul language and, and, and sin and all of these different forms of corruption and disobedience. They send them away. Not only that, but the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that there are things that physically repulse the angels as well. And uh, particularly, the Prophet ﷺ taught us not to eat garlic or onion before we come to the masjid. One of the, the biggest lost sunnahs of the masjid is good breath, using the siwak before the prayer, brushing your teeth before the prayer, having good breath, right? Uh, and the Prophet Sallallahu he instructed us, and he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well, إِنَّ الْمَلَائِكَ يَتَأَذَّى مِمَّا يَتَأَذَّى مِنْهُ الْمُصَلُّونَ That look, even the angels are affected by that which affects those who pray. The angels also don't like bad breath, they don't like to smell that garlic or that onion. Uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said not to spit to your right side when you pray because there's an angel that would be there. So you don't want to harm them or offend them. Not You can't physically harm them, but don't do anything to offend them. Now, even on the spiritual side of this all, uh, you know, there's a very beautiful uh, statement that's attributed to Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah ta'ala, that he was asked, how do the angels know that a person intends a good or an evil deed? You know, because obviously there are certain things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone has access to. So how do they know when a person intends good or evil? And you know what he said? He said, when someone intends to do good, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes a sense of musk to start coming from him that only the angels can smell. And when a person intends evil, that person starts to smell bad. That, and the angels smell that, and so the angels already kind of have an indication uh, based upon uh, that smell what you're about to do. And you know, there's a very famous statement from, from uh, one of the tabi'een who said that if sins had a smell, then you wouldn't want to sit next to me. SubhanAllah to the angels, it could be that they literally uh, have that smell. Then you have uh, a narration that I hesitate, you know, I don't mention this when I teach the story of Jibreel anymore because it opens up a can of worms and any of you who have t- taken that class, you know that I'm already, you know, uh, very, very uh, limited by my time and by even saying that narration, I open up so much and, and just people get confused for the rest of the night. It's a very famous hadith that Jibreel alayhi salam did not enter the house of the Prophet sallallahu because the Prophet ﷺ had a sculpture and he had a dog that was under the bed of Aisha radiallahu anha or belonged to Al-Hassan or Al-Hussein radiallahu anhuma or so on and so forth. And Jibreel ﷺ said that, look, the angels do not enter a house that has dogs or, or, uh, or, or suwar, uh, pictures, drawings, sculptures, so on and so forth. Now, that hadith raises many, many issues for us, right? Number one, look, if there is any house that the angels would enter despite something that they usually don't enter, it would have been the house of the Prophet So even the house of the Prophet was not entered by Jibreel 
in that situation. Number two, I mean, are, are we a dog-hating religion, <laughs> right? Absolutely not, okay? Uh, in fact, we know the hadith of a, of a woman that entered into paradise because she gave water to a thirsty dog. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu uh, you know, said that a person could keep a hunting dog, a person could keep a dog that, that guards uh, property or so on and so forth. This is obviously not a dog-hating religion per se. The only thing we're prohibited from is keeping a dog within the home because of you know, impurities. Not that a dog is an impure animal, it's not a najis animal, but the saliva is impure. So if the saliva gets on you, you have to remove that najasa, you have to remove that impurity and so on and so forth. What about pictures? Uh, pictures, uh, suwar obviously in that time, you know, there was no such thing as photography. It refers to sculptures and drawings and things of that sort. That's what taswir actually meant at that time. Now obviously if you're keeping pictures or taswir, you know, drawings or so on and so forth of, of living beings at a high place or in, or in a place that it commands some form of respect, that's what the prohibition includes. So the prohibition won't include like a photo album or, or something that's on the carpet or kids' dolls or toys and things of that sort. It's referring to pictures that are held in honor. Uh, so either they're drawn, right, or they're sculpted, or uh, even photography, if it's put in that same place, then it would take the same ruling. Now also, is it that the angels are forbidden, you know, altogether from entering? Uh, does that mean that if I don't want my angels to write down something I'm about to do, I'm, I'm going to put up a picture so that way the angels that write will leave? No, those angels are staying. These, this is clearly referring to Malaikatul Rahma, the angels of mercy. Those are the ones that would not enter. And SubhanAllah, I looked for an explanation on the dogs and SubhanAllah, you find many, many, many different explanations. And, and this is just something obviously that you say Allah and His Messenger Wasallam know best. So, you know, whether it's the explanation that, that some dogs might, be, might have jinn inside of them, might have possession, and that's why the angels could not be there, just as they would not sit in the presence of shayateen, it could be that, it could be the najasa factor, the impurity of the saliva, it could be that the angels obviously occupy a very high uh, space and so that would be beneath them. Allah knows best, we don't delve into that, but don't do anything you know, that's going to cause the angels to not be around you and that's going to offend them and, and stop them from coming either around you or in your house. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope you enjoyed and benefited from this video. If you did, then please do share it. And if you'd like to follow the rest of the series, then please do click on the top box. And if you'd like to see all of the other episodes and the other videos we have to offer, then please click on the box under that. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more amazing content.